January 21st, 2016, members of the Banff Town Wolf Pack were photographed right here in this parking lot at Johnson Canyon, in the heart of the park, scavenging garbage. A year later, eight wolves are dead, and people like me are asking, why is Banff such a haven for tourists, yet a nightmare for wolves and other wildlife? My name is John E. Marriott, and this episode, we're exposing you to the impact of mass tourism and development on the wildlife of Banff National Park. Banff National Park. This has been my backyard for the past 26 years now. And with its stunning Rocky Mountain scenery and spectacular wildlife, it's no surprise that millions of people flock here each year, making this one of the world's premier tourist destinations. But does this popularity come with a cost? Is the gem of our national park system actually failing at protecting what it's supposed to be protecting? Banff National Park was established in 1885 as Canada's first national park and just the world's third. Today, this UNESCO World Heritage Site spans over 6,600 square kilometers, similar in size to Prince Edward Island or Delaware, and draws visitors from around the world. It is a protected home for 53 mammal species, including some of my favorite animals to photograph. Grizzly bears, black bears, moose, elk, deer, mountain goats, bighorn sheep, lynx, and of course, wild wolves. To me and many others, I think wolves really symbolize what wilderness feels like. Not only are they a stunning animal, but science has shown that wolves are a keystone species and an integral part of a healthy ecosystem. In fact, wolves have been shown to positively influence the population size and behavior of their prey, changing foraging patterns and how that prey moves on the land. And there's no better example of the positive role that wolves can play in an ecosystem than the case study of Yellowstone National Park where wolves were recently successfully reintroduced. I saw the first wolf of my life in Banff in the spring of 1991, just off the Trans-Canada Highway right here at Castle Mountain. I remember watching the wolf across the river here and all of a sudden being just blown away to see this cow elk come bursting out of the bush with another wolf hot on its heels. The elk lived to see another day, and me, I was hooked. Since that day, I've followed a number of packs all over the Rockies and throughout Banff, from the Bow Valley Pack to the Pipestones to the current Banff Town Pack. I never get tired of watching and photographing these amazing animals. I first encountered the Newtown Wolf Pack in November 2015 when I was driving along the Bow Valley Parkway early one morning. I remember watching them in total awe as the three yearling pups danced around curiously in the middle of the road at a distance while mom and dad just beelined along, all business, looking for prey. At the time, the family seemed to be thriving, but that was about to change. Sometime in January 2016, construction crews working here at Johnson Canyon left garbage in several open construction bins. On January 21st, a local photographer reported seeing three wolves eating that same garbage in the parking lot. That incident began a cascading effect that reads like a crime spree trail. By the end of May 2016, the adult wolves, now feeding six new pups, began entering campgrounds and campsites looking for food left out by careless campers. Inevitably, things began to go sideways for the wolves in a terrible way. The events culminated that spring and summer with the deaths of Kootenai, the alpha female, and Scout, one of her yearling pups, both shot and killed by Parks Canada officials that agonized over having to make the decision. Through no fault of their own, the wolves had become food conditioned and were considered a risk to visitor safety. There really was no other option left but to destroy them. Within weeks, the pups began dying too. Four of them were killed on the Canadian Pacific Railway tracks in the span of a month. And the final two pups? Well, they just disappeared into the chaos, never to be seen again. Eight wolves dead in less than a year. And guess what the fines were for the two construction companies that started it all? A thousand dollars each. The truth is, this park is in serious trouble. 
Careless behavior such as messy construction sites and campsites are on the rise in Banff as are visitor and vehicle numbers. In 2014-15, 3.6 million visitors came to the park and a year later, in 2015-16, visitation numbers jumped a whopping 8%. Banff is now facing a breaking point when it comes to its protection of the park's ecological integrity. There is an ongoing, ever-increasing pressure to commercialize more and more of the park at the expense of the animals that call it home. And while visitation is soaring, Parks Canada has seen its budget shrink almost as quickly. There are now 30% fewer resource conservation staff in the field and on the ground in the park, despite the fact it's busier than ever. It often seems as if Parks Canada is more concerned about increasing tourism than it is about nature conservation, despite the fact that nature conservation is a key part of its mandate under the Canada National Parks Act. In fact, the Act states that national parks are to be maintained and used so as to leave them unimpaired for future generations. And an amendment to the Act in 1988 made preserving the ecological integrity of the park the first priority in all management decisions. In other words, Parks Canada is supposed to prioritize the health and well-being of the wildlife, biodiversity, and natural processes inside the park. Unfortunately, the opposite seems to be happening. With the continued increase in visitors, coupled with the decrease in funding and park staffing over the past several years, ecological integrity in Banff is suffering. Our wildlife and our wolves are suffering. With more visitors comes more vehicles, a lot more. In fact, last year the park had almost 4 million visitors and the majority of them came in by private vehicle. What that means is that the park highways have become ribbons of death, mitigated in recent years thankfully by the construction of a wildlife fence along the Trans-Canada Highway between Banff's borders. Unfortunately, the Canadian Pacific Railway that dissects the heart of the park has had no such mitigation and it remains a killing field for everything from wolves and grizzly bears to elk and deer. Combine the roads and railways with the glut of commercial development in the park and it's easy to see why the Bow Valley is a tenuous place for carnivores to survive long term. To compound the threat, 2017 is Canada's 150th birthday and our Liberal government has decided to celebrate the birthday by gifting everyone free entry into our national parks, including into Banff. While that sounds like a great idea on the surface, Banff's already overcrowded town site and attractions are expecting to be flooded with up to 5 million visitors this year. How will that additional growth further impact our parks and our wildlife? And how's it going to affect the three remaining members of the Banff Town Wolf Pack? In recent months, Parks Canada announced some steps to address the expected influx of visitors this year, including a renewed focus on visitor education, and a slight increase in funding for conservation staff. But what's really needed at this point is an action plan from the federal government to deal with these problems in Banff. And the truth is, they already have one. In 1996, 20 years ago, the Bow Valley study came up with a clear list of recommendations for what should happen in Banff. Yet the various federal governments over the years have simply ignored most of those recommendations. The federal government needs to revisit that study and dramatically increase funding going back into conservation. Everyone should be able to visit our magnificent national parks and enjoy our wildlife like wolves. But for that to continue to happen, we need to ensure that our parks are protected now and for future generations. In early April, the Banftown wolf family unfortunately suffered another tragedy. Two-year-old Anik, a black male wolf, dispersed out of the park and was shot and killed by a trophy hunter after leaving his father and sister. His sister's now wandering the Bow Valley on her own, but thankfully, it's not all bad news regarding this wolf family. Much to everyone's surprise, the alpha male, the father, Rusty, is believed to be denning with an unknown wolf or wolves just south of the town of Banff. What will these wolf pups face in Banff? Only time will tell. If you're concerned with the well-being of Banff's wolves and other wildlife and the increase in visitation and development in the park, please take action by clicking the link at the end of this episode or visit exposedwithjohnemarriott.com.